for me, it's been life changing. You've got I've gone from in severe pain on a daily basis to it's no longer it's a thing of the past almost. I was super yeah. excited to talk to you because I just checked my calendar and I saw that almost exactly a year ago we started working together. And yeah, I bet you, yeah, you came yeah. to me, you're like, I'm a soccer player, I've got these bad hip problems. And then now one year later you're making your first team debut. That's that's kick ass. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> I wanted you to just share that story about what's happened in the past year. Like you came to me, you had these bad hip problems, and even before that, two or three years ago, it might have even been worse. Um, tell us how your hips were and then how are they now? Yeah. So essentially I've always over the last few years, I think it was about 10 years ago, a little over 10 years ago, I went to a, a physio and I kind of had a groin pain and that's what I ended up saying. It's just a weak groin and, um, they can keep a close eye on it, but you'll be okay. You're, you're quite young. So we're not going to operate yet. Um, and you should be okay. And then as I went through school, as I went through, um late years of sort of high school and early years of university I was sort of getting more pain and I thought this can't be right and I was doing my normal thing football gym sessions getting a lot of pain so it was in 2018 I went to uh ended up going to the hospital get a scan uh x-ray first then MRI and then that showed a bone spur actually on both hips but obviously more so the right side and a lateral tear and at that point I was kind of directed towards surgery and kind of felt like that was my only option. But for me, I thought there must be another way. And then I started digging into things. I came across yourself, uh, the FAI fix and started to get into some of the exercises. It was actually my dad, who's got a similar problem. He was like really clued up on this stuff, got into it. And I started to do it with my local physio and it was, it was working. It started to, um, you know, the proof was in the pudding, it was working. And then I decided to take the foot, uh, season off football and to really focus in on all the hard work and getting my hip stronger, essentially, and giving it a go before I gave in to the idea of an operation. So I actually had an operation booked and it was like later in the winter I was going to have it done. And then as I started to do these exercises, so the the tissue work and obviously these tools, the the hip stick and the the um, quad boulder roller has been lifesavers and they're more things I've used in recent times but when I started to do like the tissue work the stretching the activations it just it changed my world you know it literally took me from I'm having the operation I've got no choice to hang on a sec do I really need this operation and then slowly but surely I then started to really sort of go deeper into your YouTube videos um, I found you were the go-to person for this you know, um, hip problem. And, um, you know, I didn't want to have the arthroscopy and surgery. So I thought, how can I avoid this? And I thought, well, go to someone who has the more sort of natural approach or wants to heal itself and, you know, give, give your body a shot at, you know, getting stronger. So once I started to do the exercises, I got back into football, the pain was going away. And then it was obviously more in more recent times in lockdown um, during the pandemic time that there was no football. And I kind of thought, come on, this is a time to kind of master my hip and master this pain. And if I can get it to a point where, because at one point I was hurting in everyday life, I could be doing football or no football, it was hurting, it was affecting my sleep. I couldn't, you know, the pain was quite real and it was quite severe. And then by doing some of what you advocate, it just got so better, quick, so much, uh, got better so quickly that, you know, I thought to myself, is this possible to not have the pain even whilst playing? And it uh, turns out in more recent times, you know, after lockdown, having worked with you on Skype and wrote notes down, taken notes and really immersed myself in this, going back to your video libraries, things like that, and just being reminded, getting feedback, learning those little distinctions, um, I realised there's a, there is a way. And now I've gone from not playing football, trying to get back into football, to playing for what is a semi-professional football club in England. And on the way up so yeah I mean I, I couldn't thank you enough for the journey I've had but now I managed to play football with very little pain and I'm on top of it and I've got a routine going I've got sessions where I do deep mobility sessions I've got you know maintenance sessions I've got a good call uh, cool down session a warm-up session and 
I just feel so much happier about it. And it's not something I used to associate football with pain, but now I associate football with like, you know, performance and what I love about football and soccer, what they call it in America. So yeah, it's been an incredible journey and I just want to keep that going really. That's beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing all that. There's many things that I find particularly useful and interesting and important about your story. One is there's a lot of other football players, soccer players out there that are trying to compete at a high level. And one of the things that they typically say about FAI or femoral acetabular impingement is that, yeah, if you want to just change your life and not do anything that intense, then yeah, you can get away with physical therapy and stretching and mobility work. But if you really want to play at a high level, like where you're playing at, which I would call a high level, uh, surgery is like the only thing that's going to do it for you. And that scares a lot of people into prematurely getting the surgery. We're not saying the surgery is never an option for anybody, but they do it too quickly before they've really maxed out all of the non-surgical options. So um, I think that's an important piece about your story. And the other piece that I want to highlight, because people haven't seen the backstory about what you've been doing for the past year, we've had so many Skype calls, me, you, and your dad, and I've written you like mile-long emails about technique and subtle techniques with the quad baller and how to change your position and stuff like that. And one thing that you've done probably better than almost anyone that I've worked with is the consistency and the diligence and always taking things up to the next level. It's like, you don't just say, oh, I tried some foam rolling and it didn't fix everything. So foam rolling and massage doesn't work for me. I tried a couple stretches. It didn't work for me. So I got to go right to surgery. Like you've come every month, you kind of level up your game and learn something new. So I really acknowledge you that for that. And I really encourage anyone who's in a similar situation to do what you do, do what Luke does, which is be diligent, be consistent, and always be trying to take things to the next level and learning more and more. Um, I want to ask you one last question. I think you laid out your story beautifully. If there was, and there are other footballers, other soccer players who are in your situation where you were a year, two, three, 10 years ago, they want to play their sport, but they're having this pain. Maybe they've got the x-rays and the MRIs, everyone's saying get surgery. What's to keep it simple? What's like the one thing that you would recommend that they do? This the single most important thing that they could do before they chose to get surgery or not? I mean, I would say that you know, realize that there is always another way, and don't give up at the first hurdle. You know, if, if you try an alternative therapy like this and all this stuff that we've been doing, then uh, realize that you know it might not work at first. It might not work after a week. It might not work after a month. But you'll find that over weeks, over maybe a few months, that you can make change that is actually quite, for me, it's been life changing. You've got, I've gone from in severe pain on a daily basis to it's no longer, it's a thing of the past almost. So um, momentum is everything. So I would say, you know, consider all your options before you decide to go down one path, because often there's, there's a million options. But if you find someone like yourself, like an expert who knows what they're doing, they've been through it. Um, more often than not, they'll get you the same results that they got for themselves. Super well said. I've got nothing else to say. That was brilliant. I, I thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank and, you. All right. Peace, brother. Thanks, Shane. See you later. Yeah.